Bundestring! Bundestring! What's up, everybody? Happy Staunchoween! Welcome back! I, th I was thinking, you know, it'd be in October and everything, so close to Halloween. Why not talk about some of my favorite all-time Tales from the Crypt episodes? The Assassin. I was in Europe. There was an Elvis sighting there, so I figured I'd check it out, but it was just a fat guy in a sequined suit. I took him anyway. First off, let's get the facts straight. This is William Sadler, familiar face in the Tales from the Crypt canon in both episodes and the classic film Demon Knight as Straker. But this is him reprising his role from Bill and Ted's bogus journey as Death, where in that film, he forced the dudes to bargain their way out of purgatory via some friendly bets. And here, well, it appears that Death and the Keeper, their old friends, make sense. And it also appears that Death is a degenerate gambler, which also makes sense when you think about it. Anyways, what I'm getting at here is the Tales from the Crypt universe and the Bill and Ted universe are all one and the same. And since Corey Feldman's in this episode... That means that he, too, is part of the Bill and Ted universe. Facts. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> uh, the assassin tells the tale of an AWOL assassin who is being hunted down by operatives from the CIA, and they track them down. Problem is, they have to deal with his unassuming wife, who has absolutely no idea about her husband's secret past. The story gets going pretty quick here, you know, we get hints that something's up early on as we see the house under surveillance. And the husband, he definitely seems a little sketchy, a little 90s, a little beardy, you know what I mean? And it's not long after he leaves that the bad guys make their move, which is my favorite part of this story. I mean, we get Corey Feldman and Jonathan Banks as a kind of classic bumbling duo. <gasps> Say goodnight, Gracie. Feldman's doing a kind of a lisp, you know, reminiscent of his uh, performance from The Birthday. And Jonathan Banks, you know, he has a whimsical strut about him. It's nice to see that guy having a good time. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, oh, what a mess. Oh, women are always bleeding on the furniture. Oh. Let's grab some munchies. Women are always bleeding on the Sorry. furniture. What the f- What? Stain. The main plot kind of plays out like True Lies or, or something like that, as they reveal to the housewife that her husband, of course, is actually an AWOL CIA assassin who's been on the lam for five years. And everything this woman knows about her husband is a lie. Even his face, as they explain how he got plastic surgery and they've been on his tail. And they ended up busting him from dental records, of all things. But, I mean, this dude went all out. And he successfully hid his secret past from his wife. But of course, you know, instead of just handling business, our 90s bumbling villains lay out the entire plan, you know, as they tend to do. And as badass as they are, though, you know, Chelsea Field, who, who plays uh, Gwen here, she's, she's the head. She's the leader here. She's the badass. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, there's a no-witness policy, and Gwen recommends that they take the innocent Miss McKay down to the basement and uh, take care of her. Okay, what do you guys think's going to happen here? How do you think the episode's going to end? Let's take a little poll. Okay, number one, the assassin never makes it home because he lost a bet to William Sadler. Number two, Corey Feldman sporadically busts out into song and dance. Or number three, Everybody likes this video, it leaves me a comment, and subscribes to Staunch TV. Let me know what you think below. But, of course, Feldman's sex drive leads him down the so-so path to 90s lust, and Miss McKay is able to distract him. I mean, how can you say no here, honestly? Feldman has played some bad guys, but this guy really sucks. And in classic Tales from the Crypt fashion, he gets a memorable on-screen end. This is McKay. I'm still gonna kill you when I'm finished. Ah! Whoa! Whoa! Hey, Ms. McKay! Ms. McKay! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! For stop! Ms. McKay! Ms. McKay! Stop it! Get yeah, down! Classic. Now, Miss McKay, it turns out she's kind of a badass as she takes things in her own hands. Uh, she's barely doing it, but she, she's getting by. She's smart, you know what I mean? She even kicks Chelsea Fields' ass and nearly manages to escape. 
just before giving Jonathan Banks the old single white female treatment. Sad to see them go, but, you know, this is Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> I think that's why actors did this show, you know, to have a memorable end on screen. From here on out, it's all about the ladies, though, as Chelsea Field kind of one-ups the game and, well, they talk about balls. Who are you? I'm your worst nightmare, a woman with balls. You don't have balls, lady. You don't know the first thing about them. I've disemboweled a man while he was screwing me. That took balls. And I kind of just keep thinking that at any moment her husband's going to show up and just handle business, you know what I mean? And of course, he does. To tell you the truth, it's going to be really good to see him. It's been such a long time. Not long enough. Gwen. What did you just call me? I called you Gwen. At least that's what you told me your name was when we were dating. So now that it's all over, she can, or or he can, whatever, have his dinner party. And again, for no reason at all, in classic Tales from the Crypt form, he's also a cannibal and feeds his victims to his dinner guests. And his own husband? Oh, and he I'm breaks the fourth wall. Kind of okay. Amazing Book episode. Queen. Of course I am, silly. What else would I be? And the episode ends here with the Keeper getting the best of William Sadler's death as they've been betting on body parts this whole time, apparent. So, the assassin is much different than its source material, but it's all for the better as the original one's kind of a dull story and overall it gives you everything you'd want from a Tales from the Crypt episode. Well, you know, when it comes to a non-monster episode at least. And the directing is very playful, being the only project helmed from Martin Von Hasselberg, who was one of the Kipper kids, who was a group that I was unaware I was aware of until researching this. And if you think the bookends with the Keeper and Death looked familiar, that's because they were basically reused for the bookends in the film Bordello of Blood, which is the pseudo-sequel to the aforementioned Demon Knight. Only in Bordello, William Sadler portrayed a mummy rather than, again, reprising Death. Yet, with Feldman appearing in Bordello of Blood also, that just makes it a fun little connection, you know, in this bizarre series. I absolutely love Tales from the Crypt, and if you guys want me to review more um, of my favorite episodes at least, let me know down in the comments. This is Stanchoween after all. You can check out my entire retrospective on the Tales from the Crypt sister series, The Long Forgotten Perversions of Science. I'll link it up right now. Like this video though so I know it's hitting and I might do more. Let me know which one's in the comments. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok guys. I'll be back very soon. It is Stancho Ween. Bye.